In this tutorial, we're going to learn about W3 Total Caches general settings. So previously, we've just installed W3 Total Cache and we've just gone through this basic dashboard to explain what those options are, but we haven't actually started to utilize it to uh, make our site fast. So what we're going to do now is just hop into general settings. This is where you can control all of the caching uh, for your website and really all of the options that come with W3 Total Cache. So, you know, straight away we can actually turn all caching options on or off at once, but I think it's probably best that we don't do that and we go through what these options mean and what they mean to you. So the first option we have is regarding page cache. Now, what is a page cache? Essentially what happens is every time a page is requested, it needs to be generated by WordPress and you know, naturally by PHP because that's what WordPress runs on. By enabling the page cache, it will actually store a cached copy of a HTML version of a page. So instead of needing to generate it for every single page view, you can just check this box, turn it on, and it's good to go. So it's a great way to speed up your website, especially if you don't have a super fast server. Uh, so you can just simply check that and then save all settings. It's totally okay to leave it on enhanced disk caching as well, rather than just basic. The second option we have now is to enable minification. So minification is simply removing any unneeded space in your CSS and JavaScript files. So what that is, is, you know, anytime you see, you know, a space or a carriage return, so where someone's created a new line, those aren't actually required. They just make that code really easy to read for anyone who wants to read it. So we can enable minification and, you know, ultimately, the speed gains of minification aren't large, but you know when you're tweaking your website to run faster, every little bit counts and it does all add up. So we're going to enable that now. Minify mode, we're just going to leave that on automatic. And the, the minify cache method available to us is disk at this stage because you know we're not running on any of these platforms here at the moment. But of course, you know, if you're running on multiple servers, you've probably got memcached or memcached installed and you can quite easily run on that. We can also tweak which minifiers we want to run. For the most part, default is just fine. Uh, you can see HTML only has a default available because we don't have HTML tidy installed on our server at the moment. JS minifier, you know, just, just using JS min is fine, but if you would prefer any of the other options, you can change that, you know, assuming you understand the pros and cons between them all. And again, the same applies for the CSS minifier. Once again, default's just fine, but you can change them if you'd like to. So with that in mind, we're going to save that. The next degree of caching we have available to us is database caching. So, you know, whenever a page needs to be generated, it needs to query the database in order to populate the text in the post. And, you know, I find out where the images for the post are actually stored on your website. So rather than having your website actually query the database every time it needs to do that, you can enable database caching. Uh, if you're running on something like, you know, servers that don't have an SSD, it's very, very, very advantageous to use the database cache. But if your servers are all running on a traditional spinning hard drive, then it's not too great a concern because it still needs to be read off a hard drive in some way. So you can turn it on if you like, but if you're running an extremely busy website, then, you know, you would need to check how much server load is being put on your MySQL server. And again, we only have disk available to us just in terms of the caching method because you know we don't have any of these other services installed on this current server. So again, database caching is really up to you. It's ideal that you have an idea of, you know, your MySQL server load and you know that should really influence your decision rather than just going and arbitrarily choosing to have it on or off. But of course you can turn it on and run it for a week and see how it goes and then turn it off for a while and, and then make the judgment call. The next setting we have available to us is to enable the object cache. And this is something that works in WordPress anyway. So it's a fantastic way of you know being able to speed up your WordPress website. And it works by storing any computational exercises that it deems to be you know, power intensive or, you know, it requires a lot of processing power. So, you know, as, as the plugin mentions here, it's, you know, really great for 
you know, highly dynamic websites that already use the object cache API. So, you know, unless you really know what you're doing with object cache, it's probably best not to toy around with it and you can just leave it off. The next setting we have is for browser caching. So as it says, it reduces server load and decreases response time by using the cache available in the visitor's browser. And the, you know, the real thing we have here is to be enabled is to enable HTTP compression. So that's ideally gzip compression. So you definitely want to check that box and then just hit save all settings. You know, it's really unlikely that you'll find yourself on a server that doesn't support this style of compression. So if you would like to try it, it's definitely recommended. The next option we have here is to enable a CDN and a CDN is a content delivery network. And the way it works is that you sign up to a CDN service, whether it's free or paid, and you input your server details into that. And what it will do is it will extract all of the static resources from your website and then distribute those static resources across their server network across the world. So if your server is based in London, for instance, and someone lives in New York, Ideally speaking, there's probably a server in the content delivery network that's closer to New York than London is. So it'll load those resources for the user from the most locally available server. So you definitely can do it. It does require a little bit of setup and we're definitely going to cover that later. So you can enable this for now if you'd like. And as far as the CDN type, you can have an origin pull or an origin push. For most people, an origin pull service is definitely adequate. So we're just going to leave that like it is now. Uh, we're going to show you using Mac CDN later, so I'm going to leave it as that, but you can change that to whatever you require. Next, we can choose to enable reverse proxy. So this is a little bit more complicated than we really need to discuss for the moment. And you know, to do this, you need to have varnish servers. So there's something you would need to set up on your own because they are definitely outside of the scope. Uh, of what we're here to talk about today. But if you do have a varnish setup, it's very easy to configure it using W3 Total Cache. Next up, we can choose to enable Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a CDN style service that can help protect your website across you know, various attacks. And you know, it's, it can be very advantageous to, to use it and it's free for you know, the basic degrees of use. So you can go to Cloudflare's website, cloudflare.com, and sign up and you know then putting your email and API key domain and you know configure all of these various different settings that you'd like to do. Next we can choose to enable the monitoring in here. Now we discussed New Relic earlier, it's just a really powerful tool for monitoring your website and your website speed. So you can find out you know what the bottlenecks are and then you know update and change those accordingly. So if you do use New Relic you can put in all your account details here to enable it. Uh, now for the most part it won't work on shared hosting you will probably need to have some sort of cloud hosting service you know such as Amazon's uh, Amazon web services uh, or you might you may even need to run a VPS with a regular web host towards the end of the settings here we can enter our license key now that's only if you've actually bought the paid version of w3 total cache so we haven't we're just going to continue on from here and just towards the miscellaneous settings here we can enable the Google PageSpeed API and you know this is where you would put in your Google PageSpeed API key. Uh, next we can verify the rewrite rules, enable file locking and optimize disk enhanced page and minify caching for NFS. So just it's very handy to enable verify rewrite rules because you know it means that W3 Total Cache can keep a look on your .ht access file to make sure that all the settings you've got in there are correct. The file locking uh, if it's, it's not something you really need to worry about and it's certainly not recommended for NFS systems either but that's again the kind of thing that if your web host runs NFS systems you'll most likely know about that and again just the final setting here is strictly NFS related so you can just optimize the disk enhanced page or disk enhanced cache page and the minified disk caching for NFS finally we have some debug settings available to us what it does is if you choose to enable any of these, it'll put some information into each of the pages when they're loaded in HTML comments. So anyone can see them, of course, and it will just provide data back to you on you know how the caching plugin is performing. You don't really need to use this, but if you are having problems with your website and you feel it may be cache related, this is where you can check it out. 
finally, you just have the ability to import and export configuration as well as reset. So if you make an absolute mess of the configuration in here, you can reset it. Alternatively, if you want to back up your settings, you can do that here as well so that you know you can import them later on or even on another server. So that's going to wrap up just the general settings in W3 Total Cache. If you have any questions regarding anything we've discussed in this tutorial, please feel free to ask in the comments below.